You're listening to the weekly Bible lesson from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, located in Plainfield, New Jersey, in the United States of America. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. This is the lesson for Sunday, December 31, 2017. Subject, Christian Science. The golden text is from Psalms. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. The responsive reading is from Psalms. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners, The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. The Bible. Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Second Kings In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days Fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Matthew Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Mark. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples 
and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Matthew. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely ye have received, freely give. John Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Revelation The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. 
And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. From beginning to end, the scriptures are full of accounts of the triumph of spirit, mind, over matter. Moses proved the power of mind by what men called miracles. So did Joshua, Elijah, and Elisha. The decisions by vote of church councils as to what should and should not be considered holy writ, the manifest mistakes of the ancient versions, the 30,000 different readings in the Old Testament, and the 300,000 in the New, these facts show how a mortal and material sense stole into the divine record, with its own hue darkening to some extent the inspired pages. But mistakes could neither wholly obscure the divine science of the scriptures seen from Genesis to Revelation, mar the demonstration of Jesus, nor annul the healing by the prophets, who foresaw that the stone which the builders rejected would become the head of the corner. Jesus established his church and maintained his mission on a spiritual foundation of Christ healing. He taught his followers that his religion had a divine principle, which would cast out error and heal both the sick and the sinning. He claimed no intelligence, action, nor life separate from God. Despite the persecution this brought upon him, he used his divine power to save men, both bodily and spiritually. Our master healed the sick, practiced Christian healing, and taught the generalities of its divine principle to his students. But he left no definite rule for demonstrating this principle of healing and preventing disease. This rule remained to be discovered in Christian science. A pure affection takes form in goodness, but science alone reveals the divine principle of goodness and demonstrates its rules. In the year 1866, I discovered the Christ science, or divine laws of life, truth, and love, and named my discovery Christian science. For three years after my discovery, I sought the solution of this problem of mind healing, searched the scriptures, and read little else, kept aloof from society, 
and devoted time and energies to discovering a positive rule. I knew the principle of all harmonious mind action to be God, and that cures were produced in primitive Christian healing by holy, uplifting faith. But I must know the science of this healing, and I won my way to absolute conclusions through divine revelation, reason, and demonstration. St. John writes in the 10th chapter of his book of Revelation, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. This angel had in his hand a little book, open for all to read and understand. Did this same book contain the revelation of divine science, the right foot or dominant power of which was upon the sea, upon elementary latent error, the source of all error's visible forms? The angel's left foot was upon the earth. That is, a secondary power was exercised upon visible error and audible sin. The still, small voice of scientific thought reaches over continent and ocean to the globe's remotest bound. The inaudible voice of truth is to the human mind as when a lion roareth. It is heard in the desert and in dark places of fear. It arouses the seven thunders of evil and stirs their latent forces to utter the full diapason of secret tones. Then is the power of truth demonstrated, made manifest in the destruction of error. Then will a voice from harmony cry, Go and take the little book, take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Mortals, obey the heavenly evangel. Take divine science. Read this book from beginning to end. Study it. Ponder it. It will be indeed sweet at its first taste when it heals you. But murmur not over truth if you find its digestion bitter. Today, the healing power of truth is widely demonstrated as an imminent, eternal science instead of a phenomenal exposition. Its appearing is the coming anew of the gospel of on earth peace good will toward men. This coming, as was promised by the Master, is for its establishment as a permanent dispensation among men. But the mission of Christian science now, as in the time of its earlier demonstration, is not primarily one of physical healing. Now, as then, Signs and wonders are wrought in the metaphysical healing of physical disease, but these signs are only to demonstrate its divine origin, to attest the reality of the higher mission of the Christ power to take away the sins of the world. Truth's immortal idea 
is sweeping down the centuries, gathering beneath its wings the sick and sinning. My weary hope tries to realize that happy day when man shall recognize the science of Christ and love his neighbor as himself, when he shall realize God's omnipotence and the healing power of the divine love in what it has done and is doing for mankind. The promises will be fulfilled. The time for the reappearing of the divine healing is throughout all time, and whosoever layeth his earthly all on the altar of divine science drinketh of Christ's cup now, and is endued with the spirit and power of Christian healing. In the words of St. John, He shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. This comforter I understand to be divine science. I will now read from the Church Manual the daily duties given by Mary Baker Eddy. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this church to pray each day. Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. A Rule for Motives and Acts Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to Duty It shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged and justified or condemned. This Bible lesson was prepared by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is composed of scriptural quotations from the King James Bible and correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you, and have a blessed day.